I look like a teacher. Hello there, Lemon Slices, and welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new. My name is Brianna. I'm a certified personal trainer, a big, huge biology nerd, and a registered dietitian to be. Today we are here for a fun little sit down video. I mean, I guess all my videos are fun little sit down videos, but we're going to be chatting about a certain topic that's been weighing on my mind for a while. What happens when professionals, people who we look to as authority figures for our healthcare needs, our legal needs, our finance needs, etc., join multi-level marketing companies? Let's start a discussion. Before we proceed, if you love science-based health, wellness, and fitness education with some lols and some dry sarcasm along the way. Hit that subscribe button and join the lemonade stand. I would seriously love to have you here. Without anything further, let's make lemonade. So for the sake of this video, I will not only be uh, talking about professionals who join multi-level marketing companies to become consultants, but also professionals who associate themselves and like their expertise and their credentials with a multi-level marketing company. Furthermore, I guess we should also classify what I'm considering a professional for this video. When I say professional, I mean some Somebody who has worked to earn legitimate and accredited credentials, certifications, or education to practice as a professional in any field, including but not limited to healthcare, fitness professionals, and even people who work in other professional fields such as cosmetology or finance. Nobody is off limits. Nobody is safe for me. So if you haven't noticed the theme, these are all people that you would expect to know better and people who you would expect to not associate themselves in any way with a multi-level marketing company. But what is the big damn deal? Let's talk about it. If you're here, I'm assuming you fully comprehend and understand all of the millions of reasons why anyone, let alone an educated professional, should not, under any circumstances, join a multi-level marketing company or even associate their credentials with one. Just in case you don't, here are just a few of the reasons why one should avoid buying into and slash or supporting a multi-level marketing company. Most recruitment-based multi-level marketing companies are an absolutely terrible money-making opportunity, despite the fact that they're often advertised by the reps as a great money-making opportunity. Or I guess you could spin it the other way and say they're a great opportunity to lose a ton of money. To piggyback off of that, consultants are usually required to buy product on a monthly or so basis. It depends on the company. And this is usually in order to maintain some kind of active status or maintain rank. Usually if you do not maintain this active status, then you, the consultant, do not get paid. And when people are already desperate for money, having to spend money, even if it's just like $50 to get the money that you have worked for. It really sucks. Consultants and multi-level marketing companies are very often encouraged to sell their soul. Okay, not literally. Not yet anyway. To either recruit others into the company, into their downline, or sell the products. In recruitment-based multi-level marketing companies, recruitment actually is often pushed more than the selling of a product because usually recruiting people and um, amassing a bigger downline beneath you generates more income than just selling products. Before I said uh, recruitment-based multi-level marketing companies, and that's because they're actually are legitimate multi-level marketing companies that are truly just sales based. I actually, <laughs> I don't know any off the top of my head, um, but I know that from, from just research I've done on multi-level marketing companies. I don't even know if they still exist because most of the multi-level marketing companies that we know and hear about today are recruitment based. And then there's the obvious things where joining a multi-level marketing company, there's no benefits such as health insurance or retirement plan. And lastly, obviously, you're not guaranteed to be paid for the work that you put in to recruit people and sell products. If you don't believe me, feel free to check out this literature from the United States Federal Trade Commission. In this article, they roll together multi-level marketing companies and pyramid schemes because a lot of recruitment based multi-level marketing companies are just pyramid schemes in disguise. Then there's this other study that I'm sure you probably all know about. In a lot of my um, uh, anti MLM videos in which I criticize uh, like the company, the products and the content that the distributors put out often about the products. Um, I always link this study in the AARP study, which we'll talk about in a second. I always link both of those below in all those videos. So in this study conducted by John Taylor, he basically uh, ran the numbers for several multi-level marketing companies. And in this study, it was determined that almost 100% of people will lose money. And in this same study, based on these statistics, it's actually became apparent that recruitment-based multi-level marketing companies are actually worse than illegal pyramid schemes. I'm sorry, I laughed, that's terrible. And then I just mentioned before the AARP study, that's also linked below. The AARP study is more recent and it actually does yield 
slightly better, but still terrible numbers about the monetary loss rate among multi-level marketing distributors who buy into the company. So with all of that information, what is so bad about professionals joining multi-level marketing companies? Well, and keep in mind this video is heavily opinion based. All of my content is my opinion. Let's chat about why it could present a huge ethical issue for professionals who choose to associate their credentials with multi-level marketing companies. So to start, many professions, especially the healthcare profession, has a code of ethics. The COE is different in every profession. I mean, I'm obviously familiar with the dietetics uh, code of ethics uh, because I had to learn it for school, but I think most COEs for any legitimate professional field can probably be summed up as don't take advantage of your position as the professional, not harming your patient slash client, only acting in the best interests of your patient slash client, and not steering them in a direction that you know to be harmful. So just by me listening, listing certain things there, you can kind of start to see how a professional being associated with an MLM company can, can kind of kind of start to go against that COE. It's one thing for them to just be in the MLM company as a consultant, but when they start pushing their products on their patients, their clients, and slash or try to recruit them, that's where it just gets worse in my opinion. And then even if they're not in the MLM as a consultant, you still have a lot out there that choose to associate like their expertise and their credentials with the multi-level marketing company. Ilana Molstein is probably the best example of this. She's an RD, a registered dietitian, or RDN, registered dietitian nutritionist, it's the same thing, who to my knowledge is not a Beachbody consultant, but has consulted with Beachbody. Try to keep up. She's worked with Beachbody to create uh, one of their nutrition programs known as the 2B Mindset, which I get about a million DMs and comments every hour of every day from you guys asking me to talk about the 2B Mindset program. I probably will someday, but right now it's just not super high on my priority list to do research on. I definitely will. Maybe I can, uh, like maybe if I can get the, uh, the equipment, what am I trying to say? Like the, the materials to actually do the 2B mindset, maybe that can actually be like the next, uh, the next the next diet I try like uh, and make a video about. So uh, yeah, if anybody, I don't know, if anybody has it out there and I'm asking you guys because I don't want to give Beachbody my money. Maybe I could also find it on like eBay or Poshmark. I've done that before. But yeah, I don't know if anybody is a former Beachbody consultant has it lying around, wants to send it to me. My PO box is linked below, so. Uh, but yeah, y'all can stop asking me about it for now. <laughs> Alana, as I said, is a registered dietitian. Something that seems to me to be her claim to fame is the fact that she's lost 100 pounds, which is amazing, good for her. That could not have been easy. And you'll frequently see Beachbody use that like in their marketing of the 2B mindset. So she's got a book and in her book, which is titled, You Can Do It Too. On the cover, she's holding a photo of herself from before she lost the weight. It also says on the cover that it includes a four week slim down plan, which it's interesting to me that an a dietitian would publish something like that, but I digress. Here's a little side note that I also found interesting. This book is listed for sale on the Beachbody, on the Team Beachbody website and on Audible because it's also on Audible. If you scroll down, it says copyright 2020 Beachbody LLC. So I wonder if that means that Beachbody like owns the rights to her book. I'm not really sure. I really don't know much about copyright laws. Maybe she partnered with Beachbody and decided to write this book specifically for them to sell. I don't know. I'm not positive. Um, I just thought that that was interesting. This is a situation where a professional to our knowledge is not in the multi-level marketing company as a consultant and has instead worked alongside the company and has created content for them. While we're on the topic of Beachbody, something that I wanna mention here is fitness professionals, such as certified personal trainers choosing to become Beachbody consultants. That's something that happens a lot and it drives me insane. I think one thing that does is uh, it presents the issue of, oh, look, here's a personal trainer with us. Oh, look, here's a strength coach with us. We have professionals doing our programs and endorsing our programs. So you know, we're totally legit. That's honestly bad enough in my opinion, but um, I think this is taken a step further because very often you have personal trainers who actually recruit or attempt to recruit their clients into the company. That 
in my opinion, is wildly unethical. You're A, propositioning your client, someone who is in a position where they should trust you, you're propositioning them to join into a terrible financial opportunity. Mind you, they're already paying you to be their trainer, just saying. And B, you're abusing your status as a professional by fulfilling your own self-interest at the expense of your client's finances and their health. I'm in a, a Facebook group for a personal trainers and I've actually seen this discussion play out firsthand. Someone might make a, might make a post and they'll bring up the topic of like health slash wellness slash fitness type multi-level marketing companies. Very often it's usually Beachbody or Herbalife from my experience anyway. From what I have observed, most people, most of the trainers will comment and be like, oh no, that's an MLM, no way, I don't associate myself with those, blah, 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 that sort of stuff, myself included. But there's always still a handful of trainers who are like, oh, I've been a coach for X amount of years, or my clients love Shakeology, blah, 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 things like that, like in support of the company and like saying that they, the fitness professional, the trainer, they are in like the company and they have been in it for a while. So being in the multi-level marketing company is bad enough in my opinion, but I guess, I guess as long as you keep it to yourself, it is your prerogative. But when you get into the territory of recruiting your clients and slash or like recommending that they buy products specifically from you, um, that's not okay. That is a reportable offense, in my opinion. And then there's like hair and skincare professionals in multi-level marketing companies um, of that variety, uh, such as Monet, for example. To work in this industry in the United States, you typically have to have a cosmetology license. That's because this is an industry in which the things a hair care or skincare professional recommends or does on their clients can directly impact their, their health or their well-being, the client's health and well-being. It's not a secret that the MLM company Monet has been under fire for allegedly causing hair loss. Three recently filed class action lawsuits accuse Monet of fraud and deception, among other things, alleging an inherent design and and or manufacturing defect in Monate hair care products causes significant hair loss and scalp irritation to many consumers. The FDA is assessing 187 adverse event reports related to Monate products, and more than 500 complaints have been filed with the Better Business Bureau in South Florida. Not to mention some of the questionable ingredients in it that have been known to cause health problems. These class action lawsuits claim the products use numerous harsh chemicals and known human allergens, one controversial ingredient the suit highlights is Capixel, containing red clover, which some say should be on a warning label. The University of Maryland Medical Center says women with a history of breast cancer should avoid red clover due to its estrogen-like effects in the body. It also says red clover may interfere with the liver's ability to process some drugs. As a spray tan artist, I have tried a lot, and I mean a lot, of different um, skincare things because in order to make your spray tan last, you gotta make sure you're using the proper um, products. They need to be water-based, non-toxic is best. Monate came out with their skincare line this last September and I was ecstatic when this happened. I have been saying for the last year that I wish they would come out with skincare because their hair care and their wellness line is so good that, you know, they would have to nail skincare. They, f they f nailed it. Let's start with their body wash. I just take one little circle on my washcloth. It lathers up beautifully. This stuff is freaking amazing. I have not gone live in forever, but I just needed to real quick because I have something important to talk about. If you are in Farmington, we are having a Meet Monate event downtown. It is for everyone. If you are a current VIP, maybe you're not a VIP. Listen, we are going to be talking about all things Monate, okay? Skincare, hair care, wellness. If you are all interested in knowing more about Monate, or maybe you're already a VIP and you just want to come win some stuff, um, or bring your friend, maybe you have a friend who has hair loss. Um, I know a lot of you are experiencing hair loss right now, especially if you got the COVID, you know what I mean? Um, people are talking about more now how they are experiencing hair loss after that. And Monate, you guys, is all about scalp health. It is specifically to help you grow hair, thicker hair, fuller hair. You guys, literally the best, softest, 
like healthiest, shiniest hair I have ever had. I have been with Monet two years now. I use no other products on my hair or on my skin. So I am completely obsessed. We need to get you some better hair, some better skin, or maybe you just wanna learn about some new products. And like I said, maybe you just wanna win some stuff. Talk with us, meet with us. Let's talk about getting you started on Monate. If you are not, um, you guys, Monate uses all pharmaceutical grade quality ingredients. It's made in small batches, great quality control. Um, made in the United States, okay? It's not stuck on a container ship right now, okay? I love Monate because they are non-toxic, right? These are literally the best products I have ever used, plant-based products, so. In my opinion, an educated and licensed professional that chooses to associate their credentials with a multi-level marketing company could be walking this really fine line of ethical versus unethical. People who are watching this and disagree with what I'm saying could argue, well, they can do what they want. Who are you to tell people what they can do and blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, they can do what they want. And I can do what I want by making this YouTube video. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Multi-level marketing is pretty much universally seen as an unethical way to practice business. Therefore, associated with one in any way can maybe make you seem unethical by proxy, in my opinion. So something else that I see, and I feel like we see that a lot on my channel and my anti-MLM themed videos, when a professional is associated with the multi-level marketing company in any way, it then sort of gives the consultants more firepower to be able to say, oh, well, this program was made by a doctor, a dietitian, a nurse, a physical therapist, etc." So it's safe and you know it really works. It gives these reps even more ammo to show their products. If you are hesitant about a certain product or program that someone is trying to sell to you, what's the best way that they can try to seal the deal. Tell you a doctor created it. Tell you a dietitian endorses it. Tell you a physical therapist made it. It gives not just the product, but also the company trustworthiness and credibility, which let's face it, a lot of multi-level marketing companies don't have that already because most people don't trust multi-level marketing. Most people see it as a scam. I think this aspect of it can be really dangerous for um, uninformed consumers who are just looking for a solution. They wanna lose weight, but they don't know how. So they take to social media and then they find a beach body consultant who has in their Instagram bio that they're a health and fitness coach. Really all they did was buy a starter pack, just saying, who is showing off this before and after picture. They DM that consultant and say, hey, I noticed you're a fitness coach and I saw your before and after. What did you do to lose that weight? Oh, I did this nutrition program and it's made by a registered dietitian so you know it's safe and totally effective. Or, and we're seeing this a lot right now, having tummy trouble? Just try the four week gut protocol. It was created by a team of registered dietitians and gut health doctors, or as normal people say, gastroenterologists. So you know it's perfectly okay and safe for everybody to do. Looking at you, Autumn. Autumn Calabrese is not even gonna be involved in this conversation, honestly. She's not a nutrition professional of any kind. She's not a registered dietitian. She's not a certified nutrition specialist. Her degree is in dance. It has nothing to do with nutrition or food science. All she has is like some holistic health coach something certification from, um, what's it called? Integrative Institute for Nutrition, I think it's called. I'll put it on the screen. It's one of those certifications where if you have the money to pay for it and you have a computer, then you can take it. But that actually is a classic example example of what I was just talking about. Whenever Autumn has called out for, oh, you're not qualified to be making this gut health program, blah, blah, blah. She loves to say, oh, well, this program was created by doctors and dietitians and I didn't do it by myself. Despite the fact that she's yet to name any of the professionals on this team, what I'm trying to highlight here is, assuming these people do actually exist, she's seemingly using their credentials and their expertise to give more credibility to a program that she is trying to promote to you. One of the aspects of being a consultant in an MLM company is selling the product. Not as big an aspect as recruiting, but it is still an aspect of most companies. When there's other competing products on the market that are not only just like it, but usually more affordable, because products distributed by multi-level marketing companies are usually very inflated in price, consultants have to find a way to make their product seem the best. They have to try to find a way to make you want it. Take, for example, Shakeology and Isogenics. Both of these brands of shakes taste absolutely 
f***ing repugnant, in my opinion. And yes, I've tasted both brands. But both of these products, if you buy them from Isogenics website or Team Beach Body website, they cost two to three times more than a standard protein powder that you might get at a store like GNC or even Walmart. The protein powder that I can buy in GNC also tastes better. Why wouldn't I buy that one? Then the consultant will say, oh, well, Shakeology was created by industry scientists and professionals, so it really is much better for you. And unfortunately, it was. Darren Olean holds a bachelor's degree in exercise physiology and nutrition, and he was co-formulator for Shakeology. The reason I said unfortunately before is because now consultants who are just trying to sell the product for their own monetary gain can use that fact to put Shakeology high up on the pedestal to make it seem like it's better quality and make it seem more enticing to the uninformed consumer. Arbon consultants can also very easily use the fact that some Arbon products have been formulated by a team of people that include physicians because they have. This is Dr. Raja Sivamani. Hope I'm saying his name right. He's a dermatologist and he is the chair of the scientific advisory board. Just more fuel for consultants out here to make people believe that their products are superior, worth the money, and convince you that you need their products. Something that I think is important to acknowledge here is the monetary aspect. A lot of the professionals that are not in the companies but have worked alongside the companies for whatever reason, I would I would strongly assume that um, there was a handsome monetary incentive for their participation. Like, Ilana probably didn't write that book for Beachbody for free, right? I doubt she did it for free. And then professionals that are in multi-level marketing companies as consultants. I have to imagine that they joined due to the promise of increasing their income. According to the AARP study on multi-level marketing, money is the main reason most people choose to participate in multi-level marketing. Again, that will be linked below. And depending on the field that they work in, when they're propositioned to join the company, it's not hard to see why. For example, personal trainers who work in club gyms probably don't make that much money. And I can speak from experience on that. <laughs> Unless you work at a Beverly Hills gym and are training very high profile clients, you're probably not making that much money. Not necessarily bad money, just not that much money. And usually for most of us, extra money sounds great. Also, I wanna throw this bit in. The fitness industry is unregulated. <laughs> it is not illegal to call yourself a personal trainer, to call yourself a strength and conditioning coach if you don't have a certification from somebody. However, for liability reasons, most fitness facilities do not allow a trainer to train a client if they do not hold a certification. And that's one of the reasons why I have uh, like fitness professionals, like personal trainers. I included them briefly in the conversation for today. And also again, these are people you would expect to know better. So going back to the people joining for money usually is, and this one makes me so sad to see. Teachers, how often do we see teachers joining multi-level marketing companies? I worked in a school for like two and a half to three years and there were so many teachers who were in MLM companies. It's so sad because teachers are so underpaid that they're falling for these schemes and joining just because they wanna make some extra money, which is not a bad thing. And then they embarrass themselves by flooding the break room at the school with brochures and samples of their terrible products. I know I've seen it before. When I was working at the school, I had coworkers in LuLaRoe, uh, Unique, Octavia. There's a video, there's a little story time video on my coworker who um, was in Octavia actually. It just makes me upset and sad that they're being taken advantage of like that. So anyway, I think it's pretty obvious that most people are joining multi-level marketing companies with the allure of potentially making tons of money. Now, some of them are successful in the MLM and make it to a lucrative point in the compensation plan. Obviously in their situation, it worked out in their favor and they now make a lot of money through the multi-level marketing company but they still maintain their professional license for you know whatever whatever that may be in so often it seems like just such a blatant and overt violation of the code of ethics and if it is and i feel like it's easy to argue that it is why does nothing get done about it? Honestly, probably because it's a lot of work to regulate all this stuff. Probably the same reason that the FTC is taking their sweet ass time, getting all these companies shut down for basically just being legal pyramid schemes. It would take a lot of manpower to do this. And on top of that, once a situation is like right in front of them, I imagine they'd probably have to like treat it like a, like a legal case where you'd have to review the evidence and like then sit down and determine if there really was a COE violation. That takes time and work. 
So what do you guys think? Do you work in any of the professions such as any of the ones I discussed today and know anyone in an MLM company? Were you a professional who was once in an MLM company but has since learned the error of their ways and left? Have you like been to the doctor and there was like a doctor or a nurse there or something that like tried to sell you products or like recruit you into a company? Uh, let me know below. I want to know about it. Spill all the tea too because maybe I'll maybe I'll read your stories in a video. <laughs> MLM horror stories with the theme of like when professionals join MLMs. I love listening to a people's uh mlm horror stories i think i also just like when people read to me too <laughs> in conclusion i already concluded let's wrap it up if in fact you made it to the end of this video thank you so so very much for watching you guys really have no idea how much i appreciate you for doing that if you enjoyed this video hit the like button if you hated this video you can also hit the dislike button uh but why'd you watch till the end hit the subscribe button for more shenanigans and ramblings and dogs and i will see you guys in the next one Bye. So I think the dogs are all on the couch. They've been pretty quiet. No, nope, nobody in there. Right where I left you. What tired babies. Oh my goodness. Who's a cute boy? Who's a handsome boy, Dose? He's so handsome. Hey baby, you a tired baby girl? Okay, wait, let's get the camera on Onyx. Let's see what Onyx is doing. Sup, dog? <gasps> How handsome. Alpha! <laughs> Don't start with your attitude. Onyx, you are so handsome. Can you say bye? Okay, say bye, Onyx. And now, Alpha, your turn. Say bye. So she says bye. And now we have to say bye from the king. Goodbye, my Zeus. Say bye, YouTube. He's like, oh my god, go away, peasant.